How you feeling, man? Oh. Dude, I feel awesome. <laughs> I feel really good. Wish I would have got the finish. You know, that was that was my goal to go in there and knock him out in the first round, but that's always my goal. Whenever I fall short of that, I I know I gotta get back in the gym, work even harder and go out there and get the fans what they want. They wanna see people get beat up quick, get out of here, go get drunk in Vegas, you know? So <laughs> that's what I'm trying to give them. You're always pretty energetic, always pretty confident. You've talked this year about sort of writing some of those mistakes, getting mm -hmm. back on track. This feels like a win that helps you do that. How how happy are you with that performance and and with sort of being back on track after those two losses? Oh man, I'm super I'm super happy to be, you know, back on track. After the after my last fight, you know, I got to win a, a unanimous decision and I'm piling up these unanimous decisions now, you know, but my goal is to go in there and finish fights. You know, if you get into a, you get into a, some combat in the street with somebody, you don't want to leave any question where people go back to their friends like, "Oh, you know, who got the better of that?" You want to knock this dude out. And you want everybody to know this guy's down, I'm still up, you know what I mean? So even though it was a dominant performance, I still have a lot of room to grow. I still have a lot of development of my skills to do. And I'm gonna get right back in the gym uh, after my week of you know chilling and resting and enjoying a little bit of uh, money I made and uh, get right back in there and you know get to work and get a finish. Do you feel like you made the statement that you wanted like to kind of announce yourself into the top 10? Yeah, absolutely. Ray Borg, I mean, like I said in the cage, that dude is, he's way better than what his ranking is. A 12, a number 12 ranking is very respectable, but that guy's way better than number 12. I, I, would, I would definitely put Ray Borg in the top five, but myself, I'm the champion in this division. There, there is no Demetrius Johnson to me. There is no nobody else. Justin Scoggins is the world champion, and you know I'm just I'm proving myself with every fight, and all there is to do now is go and get the gold belt. Usually when you see guys come to weigh in, they kind of look like they're dead on their feet. You're the only guy who comes in with a smile and happy. So how do you guys feel coming into the fight? What's your rehydration process like and coming right back in? Uh, I, I actually have a whole team of doctors behind me, the fight doctors that fuel my rehydration and fuel my mind with knowledge that I need to know how to do this. this there's a science behind this. You can't put on a sauna suit and go sit in a sauna for 30, 45 minutes to an hour to days of the week and expect yourself to perform at a high level. You've got to do it you know, weeks out. You've got to have all the proper methods in place. And luckily I have a whole team of mad scientists behind me that are you know telling me exactly what to do exactly how much to cut what percentage to cut and all that and you know if you want to get on board all you gotta do is reach out contact them and you know I'm sure they'd be willing to help out whoever is having problems with this stuff because you see me at weigh-ins I got a smile on my face mm -hmm. I'm throwing my kicks I could fight at weigh-ins if I needed to I've already beat you if I'm at weigh-ins and you know you can't touch me at my weakest you're definitely not gonna touch me at my strongest How why, you the big, uh, why, why the big layoff nine months was it right nine months yeah, uh, there, I had I had an injury, so I, I was off of that, which I, I don't really like to discuss my injuries too much, just for personal reasons. And uh, you know, just scheduling scheduling uh, with the UFC. And when you when you get injured and then you ask for a fight, you can't always expect them to put you in right there because the UFC is really busy and stuff. But I just wanted to make a statement tonight to let them know that no matter what, I'm healthy, I'm ready to go, and put me right back in there because you know I'm not I'm not wanting to sit. My goal is to be the world champion in 2016, and I'm well on my way. I mean, were you surprised at how easy it was for you? Because I mean, you dominated from from bell to bell. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say easy. I was definitely on my toes the whole time. I was focused on what he was doing. And uh, Ray's a dangerous guy. You know what I mean? There was a few times in grappling exchanges where I was like, where I could feel. Uh, not necessarily the tides turning, but I could I could feel him working for things that I knew I had to be cautious of. And luckily, I prepared really well for this fight. I got a great team behind me in uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina, at Revolution Martial Arts, and a bunch of really good jujitsu guys. And I was comfortable in every position. But when you're on the feet with me, you're not ever getting the better of that. I have the best striking in the UFC, and, and nobody's ever going to get the better of that. Yeah. With all that being said, I mean, who do you want next? Like I said, man, I don't care who it is. My my one goal is to be the world champion in 2016. They could literally put me against anybody in this division, and I will fight them, and I will beat them, and it's going to happen this year, and I'm going to have that gold belt around my waist. Like you said, you're a South Carolina boy. Hey, that's you're what I'm saying. Hey, hey Carolina Panthers are going to win that Super Bowl tomorrow. <laughs> Justin Scoggins is going to get that gold belt in 2016. It is going to be a beautiful year for the Carolinas, I'll tell you that. Now you say you're ready to fight. So you don't want to fight tomorrow because game. Now you could fight Monday. Now if South Carolina, if the Panthers lose, do you want to wait a week just to relax and then get your blood pressure back down and then come back and fight? <laughs> no, like I said, I tell you what, man, if they wanted to take one of those guys out of there tonight and put me in that uh, flyweight fight, I would go in there and do it. You know, give me a little bit, give me a second to catch my breath. Let me take a sip of Gatorade and throw me, give me a pair of new shorts, get this blood off of them, throw me back in there and I'm ready to go tonight. <laughs>
How much did going back home and, and moving back to training with Revolution change things for you? Because you had gone down to ATT mm -hmm. for a while. You're, this is where I need to go. Mm -hmm. Now you're back home. How much of an impact has that had on on just everything this last year? Dude, you? since I was since I was 18 years old, I've been I've been to TriStar, I've been to Albuquerque Jacksons, I've been to American Top Team, and really all I've been doing is as a martial artist, I feel you got to flow through, you got to take the opportunities that you're given. And every time I've gotten an opportunity to go somewhere and expand my knowledge, I've jumped on that opportunity because everybody's got a different way of doing things. And the more environments you can immerse yourself in, the more you grow as a person and as a martial artist. And martial arts, is my, it's not just my hobby, it's my religion, it's my philosophy, it's what I do. So anytime I get an opportunity to go somewhere and learn and grow, I jump on it and I take it. And now I've got all these skills, I've got all these tools, and I can finally sit back at home and chill with my dog and my family and be like, all right, this is what I got. This is how I'm going to be world champion. I got my family and my coaches that I've grown up with around me, and we're all like, all right, let's do it. What's it like to be a traveling fighter? When you go to these gyms, does everyone just welcome you with open arms, or do you got to get one good sparring session in before they go, all right, that guy's cool? Uh, luckily, one thing that I actually really like about it is when you're the new guy in the gym, mm -hmm. everybody wants to test you. That, that, especially that first day of sparring, you're, uh, you're fresh meat to them, you know what I mean? They're like, oh, this guy's coming in, he's a, he's a new guy, he's not in one of the normals, so we're gonna try to beat him up. You know, I love that challenge. I'm like, hey, that's what I'm here for. I'm not here for anybody to go easy on me. I'm here to grow as a martial artist, so bring it on, try to beat me up, that's only gonna make me better. Justin, according to the, the bookies, at least the MGM here, you were an underdog. Did you know about that? Does that stuff fire you up? Is that something that it, it's extra fuel to the fire? I mean, well, you know, when I look at that, I'm just like, these guys are bookies, man. These guys aren't martial artists. I mean, how many fights have you been in? You know, you don't know, you don't know much. All you can, all they can do is look at statistics. They can look at, you know, maybe how I've lost fights before or uh, guys that I've fought in the past, and they can do all their numbers and stuff or whatever. But when it comes down to it in the day, this is martial arts. This is a fight. Anybody can get the better of anybody on any day. Luckily, I was the more prepared and skilled fighter tonight. Now, traveling around, do you ever have difficulty with where you're going? You go from freezing cold to humid hot to desert. Is it difficult for you to go to all these different places? No, because I usually I get my little uh, I get my little room squared away wherever I'm at, and I adjust the temperature however I want it. Not, naturally, I like for it to be I like to be cold. So whenever I get somewhere, I get in my room and I turn the temperature down as cold as it'll go. So if I get hot or whatever throughout the day, I just kind of block everybody out, go snuggle up in my room, and just block out the world. Just, are those new tattoos in your heart? Yes, yes they are. Yeah, you, can't, you can't explain them, they're pretty bold. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, this uh, just, for me, it just represents power. This is, uh, that's, that's Mjolnir, that's Thor's hammer. Odin's ravens, which they fly around the world, they, they, they kind of gather everything for Odin and let him, let him see what's going on in life. And this, this ship to me kind of symbolizes, right now it's kind of funny, this is, I'm finishing the sleeve up, but right now this is where I've stopped at. And, <laughs> In my head, it's just kind of like I'm on this journey right now, and that, that was a good place to stop for now. I'm on a I'm on a really good path in my journey. I'll probably go home and finish it now that I got some money. And. <laughs>